All right, guys, how you doing? Welcome back to Morant's Rants. Plenty of good information, a little bit of motivation, a whole lot of truth, no financial advice. It is Friday night, January 5th, 2024. Now, I've been on YouTube. This is going to be our third year now. So I'm going back in time. I'm going to go to 2023 and 2022. I have the clips. I have the videos. And let's see what we got right. I'm doing a day in review of this channel. Just so you're clear, you can follow with me. I'm going to play the clip from two years ago. I'm also going to play the clip from a year ago. Let's see what we got right. You guys watch it with me. Enjoy. And let's see. This is going to be last year. And you guys be the judge. Let's go. Hey, by the way, guys, I have not watched it. Right? So I'm going to push the clip. I haven't watched it yet. I'm going to react just like you would. Because I do want to see how much I did get right. And or what we talked about then. Maybe you'll learn some stuff. Let's go for it. I'm Dory. Pour your drinks. I got them. Let's go. Hi guys, this is a quick question for Adam Aaron. I'm about to go to work and I'm, it's racking my brain. Adam Aaron, I'm trying to figure this out. So no one here asked for Ape. Like no investor asked for Ape. You thought it up on your own. You said pounce, checkmate, all of this. Like you painted up to be something it's not. But you were protected. You were protected by the fact that retail owned AMC and then you exposed it to Ape. You left yourself vulnerable, right? Then you started getting shorted on Ape, not AMC. AMC selling off, whatever it may be, AMC's getting attacked at this, but it's not as bad as Ape. Ape is like infinitely worse. It was an equity split. You took the equity out of the stock that was shareholder value, like people's money, people's life savings. You took that money and you put it over here on Ape and then your bondholder and Terra Capital chopped it all the way down to where it was, where they bought it back at 66 cents. They're the shorters. You just said you wouldn't allow Wall Street to short this company down to zero, yet you sold it back to them. They made profit over the last four months, and all the profit they made, they paid you that profit back for 22% of your company. You have to be the worst CEO ever. Like, why is no one asking this question, and why do you still have a job? Just because you prolong the inevitable doesn't mean you're doing something great. You're doing their work for them. You gave them money. They went ahead and shrank it all the way down, and now we're gonna do it again? I'm just asking the question, Adam. Never asked for it, you got exposed, and now you wanna paint it something that it's not. And Terra Capital, they are the shorters. They have a relationship with Citadel. Did you know out of all of the hedge funds in the world, I'm talking about in the history of the planet, Citadel has never been in negotiations or in talks with any hedge fund for a portion of their company. Ken Griffin's always owned 100% of Citadel. Do you know that he that they were in negotiations with Ventura for like 8% or 7% of their company? Like that's a relationship. And that's you. Your relationship is with them as well. Retail investors are getting swindled, they're getting finessed, they're getting robbed, and you're facilitating it, allegedly, right? That's what we're supposed to say? Explain it, Adam Aaron. I'll have somebody tweet this out to you, so maybe you can defend yourself for once, because you never do. You deflect, you ignore, and you keep tweeting. Peace. Damn, got it all right, 100%, out of the park, and it's even gotten worse. Prices come down well beyond that. So, uh, 1,900 views on the video. That means some AMC investors might have seen that video. Maybe it changed their mind. But here's a video from two years ago. Okay, guys, hold my feet to the fire on this one. Only uh, 295 views. Yes, I didn't have a lot of subscribers back then two years ago. Not like I do today, but I will tell you, uh, 295 views. Let's see what I have to say. Good luck. This company is revolutionizing, pivoting, changing. Can you imagine being invested in that company and then someone saying, oh, it's going to bankrupt? What the hell? I read the article, Yahoo. Yahoo Finance said GameStop has a $300 million burn this, this last quarter. They missed projections. What did they miss projections on? On becoming uh, cash flow? You all right? Positive? 
FCF positive matters to a company that's established, not a company that's still grinding and transitioning. So I don't believe in that whatsoever. We're still building our infrastructure. And now that it's being built one year, two years in, come on. Ryan Cohen's been on the job since June, officially voted in board of directors in June. So from June to now, that's six months. And we're, we're judging? We're judging GameStop? You're crazy, man. How about you just invest the best way you know how? Keep your mouth shut. I mean, that's the best way I'm doing it. You know what? You know what's crazy, guys? This is the problem that I have with investing, period. And I'm going to get you the chat in the channel later. I'm ranting right now because I feel a certain way. Look at the stock all you want. Okay, look at, look at GameStop. But I have a problem with everyone's way of thinking. Here's my problem. What is the upside? What is the upside for GameStop? No, 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 no. Let me rephrase that. What is the upside for Ryan Cohen? Ryan Cohen's upside is making money based off of his investment. What is his downside? Losing the money he invested, millions. And I'm talking about 86 something million and additional millions and millions. You wanna talk about cost opportunity? Yeah, opportunity cost is there for him as an investor being a billionaire. But he took his money and he put it in GameStop. He took a whole year out of his life so far and he's invested this way. So what could he lose? Everything everything so he has everything to work for go look at that other company that people are investing with go look at that company their board of directors sold the chairman of the board already sold everybody sold every single share that is the difference you see the downside of amc guys you guys get this yet that the upside of it is it becomes profitable retail makes money but it's your money that they're managing they're not managing their own money you see that's why I'm with gamestop because i don't believe adam or i don't believe ryan cohen wants to lose a hundred million dollars he's actually battling with his own funds like, that's my side. So the upside to it is he's going to make himself a billionaire or two, he's going to wipe out and just not make it. Well, that's not possible because he surrounded himself with some smart ass people smarter than you and I, except are they? Because I mean, I'm, I'm pretty damn smart. I'm invested in GameStop. That makes me infinitely smarter than the next guy. That's the upside of GameStop, guys. And the downside is he could lose his own money. So I'm, that's where I'm baking. That's where I'm at. It's 100% of Ryan Cohen and his money and his investors, and that's it. But I've got plenty of years to go through with this. My price targets, my my theory, like I'm never selling, right? Like they could literally give me a ridiculous price per share. And I just look at you and be like, I, I own the company. I want to own this company, so I don't want to sell. I don't need the money. That's the crazy part. I've invested enough money to where I don't need it. See, I've been living a year without it. I talked to my wife last night about this. My wife today texted me, said, hey, how are we doing our investment? I said, honey, we're fine, but if you want to put more, we can still keep putting more. No, we're fine for now. We're fine for now. When, what, at what point in what year do I put a cap on myself? I never will. I never will because in 40 years, when it's still the company that I want it to be and it's still doing the things I want it to do, there was a, there was a company out there called FedMart back in the 70s. FedMart was big box, big, big box realty, real like realty um, retail. I'm so sorry, I'm all over. Ah, ah. FedMart was out there, guys. FedMart had an employee. Um, they had a guy named Saul Price, and then they had an employee by the name of. Uh, and that, that was the guy who actually was the leader of it all. And then they had an employee by the name of. Um, Jim Senegal. And Jim Senegal was this hot ass employee, man. He knew his thing. He knew his shit. He was great. And in the 70s, they were kind of trying to come up with ways to save the consumer some money on retail and come up with an idea. So Saul, Saul Price went out and made Price Club. And he took over San Diego. He took over Southern California. And he had an idea and he had a plan. You know what Jim Senegal did? Jim Senegal went and went up to Seattle and got with Jeff Brothman and they got together, these two guys, and they developed Costco. They developed Costco in the Northwest and they started on a tear for the next 10 years. Smart ass dudes from 1983 all the way through. And I'm telling you guys that, and the reason why I'm telling you this is this, there are smart people out there that invest for lifetimes. Jim Senegal and Jeff, are, well, Jeff unfortunately passed away a couple of years ago. But Jim Senegal is worth north of five billion, six billion, seven billion dollars right now. His company is thriving. He invented Costco. He then, in turn, twelve years later, after inventing his company, bought out Price Club. He bought out his boss. Guys. He made, and that's Binks over there jumping around. No edits, no cuts. That's live stream. But he bought out his boss, and then he took over the country and he took over the world. 
Costco's huge, guys. Look at the price, it's undefeated. But my point to telling you this is this. 40 years ago is when they started doing business. 40 years ago is when they started making a plan towards this direction. I am dealing right now, Alan Adel, Ryan Cohen, Larry Chang, Lawrence Chang, I'm dealing with three guys that I wanna roll with for the next 40 years. I'm a believer that way. So it was Chewy first, and now there's GameStop. And GameStop has a bigger platform, more members, more every, everything's better. And that's the revolution that I'm facing. I don't give a shit about this financial restructuring. I did initially, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I initially was like, man, I'm out to gut these shorters. And then I said, you know what, I'm okay. I'm okay, let these dudes fall on their own sword, because they will. But I start thinking, I'm better than just one year. I'm better than just five years. I'm good for a lifetime here. So just like those guys, Jeff Rothman and, and Jim Senegal and Salt Price, the whole, the whole Price family, everyone who invested into Costco, why wouldn't I do that with my GameStop? Yeah, damn, I did it. Yeah, that was two years ago, guys. And the message hasn't changed one bit. You know, GameStop is where I want to be. I didn't want to touch AMC. We know that part. Adam Aaron was completely wrong for the company and still is. And he'll eventually leave the company and he'll leave it bankrupt or still, you know, through asking for more money. But, um, yeah, I hold myself accountable, guys. Listen, I'm falling back. This is a new segment I want to do each week where I review a couple of videos from the previous years that I've been live on YouTube and or making content because I want to hold myself accountable. I want to know what other content creator can do this. And I don't care if you meet Kevin, Keenan Grace, PP Seeds, Tony De Niro, it does not matter. Trey Trey, Matthew Course, I don't care who you are. Make a video about your old videos. Show me the receipts where you are still singing the same tune. Because I've never changed my delivery, I've never changed my approach, and the message has been the same. It is GameStop. Can't stop, won't stop, GameStop. Everything else is nonsense. Always has been. I'll see you around tomorrow. Millionaires? Maybe? Who knows? I'm going to take the wife out. You guys know the drill. I go out every weekend. Peace.